Rewind nearly two decades. It's August of 1998. Recently returned Apple co-founder and newly appointed interim CEO Steve Jobs confronts an eager and optimistic Macworld audience. It was this day that marked the end of an era, the 20th century company that was Apple Computer. Under Jobs' matured leadership and vision rose a corporation that would become an economic empire, a nearly trillion dollar household brand whose iconic products would shape the industry forever. But how could a single event leave such a resounding impact on the economy and an arguably dying company? Although there are several factors responsible for the current state of affairs, I personally believe the answer can be attributed to a single device, iMac G3. Now, although it doesn't look like much in light of the contemporary iMac line and other modern all-in-one desktops, in a market where most machines were defined by a boxy frame and an ugly beige or gray finish, the friendly rounded machine devised by the then obscure Apple designer Jonathan Ive was something completely new at the time of its release. Jobs called the original iMac a personal computer from another planet with better designers. From 1998 to 2001, there were four total revisions of iMac G3, which came in several hardware variants and flavors. I happen to own the Indigo iMac DV Plus model released in the summer of 2001, which shipped with Mac OS 9.0 and sports a 450MHz PowerPC G3 processor, 64 megs of RAM, and expanded to 192 megs by an additional user installed DIMM, an ETI Rage Pro graphics processor with 8 megs of video RAM, a 20 gig IDE hard drive, and a slot loading DVD drive. FYI, DV stands for digital video, meaning that this particular model of iMac G3 was geared towards video production, especially with iMovie. Taking a look at the right side reveals the I.O., which features dual USB 1.1 ports, dual Firewire 400 ports exclusive to iMac TV, headphone and microphone jacks, a phone jack, something we don't see anymore, a dedicated reset button, and an Ethernet port. In terms of design, iMac G3's unique standout feature is its semi-translucent colorful shell which effectively and stylishly celebrates the components within the machine, including the massive 1024x768 15-inch CRT tube monitor. The machine also features integrated stereo speakers, dual front headphone jacks, a microphone for simple recordings, and a handle to further enhance convenience and user experience. Ultimately, it was this logical, compact, chic, inviting, and user-friendly design language that set Apple on a path of astonishing success and fortune thereafter. Besides its construction, another staple of the original iMac was iMovie, released in late 1999. Although it wasn't the first of its kind, it did enable the everyday Joe, who was able to afford a computer like this, to produce simple home movies, something that was unheard of at the consumer level. One of these individuals was a then 18-year-old Casey Neistat, who claims to have maxed out his credit card just to buy a DV variant of iMac G3. His use of an early version of iMovie with that very machine in no doubt helped to jumpstart his ambitious filmmaking career on HBO, and later his world-renowned work on this platform, YouTube. As for my own experience using the iMac G3 and macOS 9, being a longtime macOS user myself, I found it very enjoyable and intriguing to interact with the grandfather of the modern Mac. While doing so, I tend to take a mental trip back in time to the early 2000s and imagine who bought this machine and how they used it. What I do know is, the previous owner did not wipe the drive of this machine because I was greeted with an old copy of Microsoft Office and the Mac OS 9 game bugged him, which is low-key a guilty pleasure of mine. As I flew through the menus, windows, and applications like I typically do, Despite the fact that, on a surface level, the interface, especially in terms of design, is radically different to what it is today, I couldn't help but notice striking resemblances to current versions of macOS. And yeah, well that's an obvious observation, it becomes even more clear when you meld the external design of the G3 and its operating system together, the way Apple intends you to. What exactly am I getting at? Well, Apple has maintained a line of largely successful Mac computers for the past two decades all beginning with the esteemed machine being discussed in this video. Its many successors share the same qualities that made it distinct and desirable in a vast market of bland devices. iMac G3 in no doubt influenced the development of iTunes and Mac OS X, which prompted the creation of iPod, which then inspired the iPhone, which then was expanded into the iPad, you can see where this is going. It set a profound precedent at Apple, and embodied the company's emphasis on simplicity, 
quality, and user experience. This machine is one of few truly historic game-changing products, a notable catalyst in the shift towards a more modern, distinctly 21st century tech industry. The magnitude of advancement since the release of the iMac G3 has been astonishing, and leaves me wondering as to what the next big thing will be. And living in this exciting world of innovation, I certainly can't wait to find out.